what's good we're back on this thing today we're going to be going over this 3d text effect it's like you can just make this text 3d and just apply it over any video file and kind of just like have your own tag in a video you can have like some branding i've seen a lot of editors do it with their logos so you can do it with that as well i'm going to be showing you how to do it on text but you can easily transfer the concept over to that and i'll also be showing you how to export it so it has a transparent background so you can just easily do it once and then just drag it over anything you want before we get into the video if you're new here what i do is a lot of tutorials music video effects basically anything to do with the visually creative side of the hip-hop scene so if you're interested in that stuff definitely subscribe if you haven't already like and comment let's shoot for 500 likes this time i said 300 likes uh two days ago or whatever last time i uploaded we hit that like in the first day so uh let's let's try 500 and like 50 comments or something so if you could take a second leave a like leave a comment it really does help me out a lot it helps grow the channel helps grow the community and in return i can make more videos for you guys if you want to support the channel even more you can go over to brianalmada.com check out my texture pack it allows you to get that aug lone wolf kind of style paper rips and effects and it also helps the channel out and you get some really cool digital assets along with it. I'll have a link to that as well as a playlist with all the tutorials on the texture pack in the description, as well as my Discord, Twitch, and just a bunch of other things that I'm pretty active on all of them. So if you want to connect outside of YouTube, go down to the description and check all those stuff out. But yeah, guys, that's enough talking. Let's get into the video. Let's make this 3D text and uh, get into it. So first off, I'm just going to show you what I did with this one. This is for Split Mind. It's a producer collective that I'm a part of. I'm the creative director for. I did a video recently for them and it's right here. Play it. And I just had it lay over there, and then towards the end I had it come back up. I think it's a cool little thing that you can do. It's just a little bit of branding, and it's uh, pretty simple to do. So I'll be showing you how to do that. So first of all, just make a new composition. You can make it uh, completely empty, and right-click down here and make a new text, and type in whatever you want it to say. I'm going to have it say 3D text. The font I'm going to be using is Arial Bold. I think it's a pretty simple font. It's basic. It's built in everyone's computer. I think it looks pretty good. So the first thing I'm going to do before we do anything is go and turn on this proportional grid here and also go to the anchor point and just zoom in and make the anchor point aligned with the red dots, the red dot on the left and the dot on the top with the green bars. And you should be able to drag and just line up the bars pretty easily. It doesn't have to be dead dead center, but I just think for the spinning around, if it's a little off, it'll like almost like go out of cycle. It like doesn't look right. So that's the first thing you do. And uh, you can turn off the grids after that. The next thing I'm going to do, this is just kind of setting up, go to composition settings and the 3D renderer. I use the Cinema 4D one. I think it looks a little bit better. And then if you click options there, it brings up your quality. When you're working, you can have it down a lot lower. And then when I would render out, I would recommend to at least have it over typical. Uh, it all depends on how good of a computer you have. You can try out and then whatever works best for you. I keep it around typical and then bump it up a little bit when I go to render it. But uh, those are the two things that are kind of important. Then what I do is go over here and click toggle switches and modes until you see this 3D layer option. Click that. Now this is technically a 3D layer. And to make it look a little bit better, you can go to bevel style, click convex. I bump this up to something like five. And then the extrusion depth is all up to you. You can't really tell that well right now because it, there's no lighting, so it all looks white. But I think anywhere from 75 to like 125 looks good. So I'm gonna do something like maybe like 80. And then before we go on any further, uh, I'm just gonna go and and add some lights because then we can kind of see what we're working with. So to add some lights, it does seem a little uh, daunting at first, but if you just right click, create new and add a light. First one I'm going to add is a spotlight and I'm going to make it, I want the text to be like grayish white. So I'm going to just drag it to like a little bit less than pure white and then keep all the settings the same. Click OK. And then you can see it already has this. I'm going to drag the Z out so it's a little bit further away. Drag it up and then just play with the light to get it hit right. This is all preference right here. I normally do one in the top right and then one in the bottom left. So it kind of hits it from both sides and then use an ambient light. That's a pretty basic lighting setup that I use for like 3D text. Obviously you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead now and add a different light. It's gonna be a spotlight as well. And I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter than that one. It's gonna be coming from the bottom left. So again, dragging it down, using the Z to bring it out further. Rotate it up towards the text itself. To be honest, I'm not too good at this either. Uh, I know there's people that are way better using lighting setups and stuff, but I'm pretty sure this, when you're selected on it, that bar is where the light is facing completely. So say I were to tilt it up, now I'd be facing the light or the text perfectly. And I want to have it bounce off just like the bottom of it. Maybe drag it down a little bit. And now you should have light from the top right and from the bottom left. And so I'm just going to use one last thing. It's called an ambient light. It's just kind of all over. And for this one, you're definitely going to have to bring down the intensity. Otherwise, it's just going to make the whole text white. Here, I'll give you an example. So if you leave intensity at zero or 100 and click OK, it'll bring it all the way to white. But you can easily fix that by just going into lighting options and then changing on the uh, intensity. I think something around like 10 looks good for the most part. And now you can see you have that, uh, you know, a little bit of depth to it. And now we can go back to our text layer, 
go to material options, turn on cast shadows. That's just going to allow the lights to hit the text properly. Now you can see there's a lot more shadows and then going through all these light options. I like to keep ambient on hundred diffuse is good at 50. It's basically just how much it diffuses the light. So, so I keep it at 50 that way it kind of diffuses some of the light, but not all of it. Specular shininess. I like to keep it shiny. So I'm going to bring it up to hundred or specular intensity. I like to bring it up to hundred, my bad. And then specular shininess. I keep it most of the time, like right around 20 to 30 right here. I think I'm going to keep it at 30 and then same thing for, and I'm going to keep metal at hundred and then same thing for reflection intensity. I like to keep it at like 20 to 30. So maybe something like 26 here. And then if you want to keyframe the text to do that spin thing that I had, I go to transform and then keyframe the Y to start at zero. And then uh, for example, we could just go one second in that way. I don't have to render a lot. You could drag it to one full rotation. And then boys, uh, don't make the same mistake I just did. I just rendered out. I thought it said one for one second. It was actually one minute here. Uh, yeah, so don't make that mistake. That took forever to render. And I just realized I needed it to be like five seconds instead of one. But yeah, after you render that, it might take a while depending on your computer speed. What you can do is you can just check to see if you like it. You can change the lighting or whatever. I think for us, this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click end to end the comp there and then trim it, make sure it's the last frame. And then I'm just gonna turn the transparent on so we can see what that looks like with the transparent. And we can put any kind of video behind there. But if you don't have a video right now to put behind it, I recommend just going to file, export, add to render queue. This is what I recommend doing either way, naming it whatever your text is going to be. And then going to your output module and I'd use AVI. And then when it says channels, make sure it's just channels RGB plus alpha. Alpha allows it to be see-through and transparent in the background. And then you can go ahead and render that out. And then you can just open it up in Premiere or whatever you want later on. And there you have it. Just drag it above your clip and it's already and it's already going over your layer. And then what I did here to make it look like it's like kind of blended in is what I did is I just took the color grade and copied and pasted it onto the actual text. But uh, since we don't have that, it's like the rendered out version. We, depending on what color your clips are or whatever, you can go to color wheel. You could drag some green in there into the shadows and maybe in some of the highlights as well. That way it's like just green and kind of fits the mood of it. You don't have to do it. It's uh, whatever you think looks best obviously. But yeah, guys, I think that's just a pretty cool way of adding your stamp into the video. You can obviously, this one's a lot faster. And what I'd do is I'd recommend when you render it out, have it circle a few times, like in this one, for example, in my split mind one, I had it rotate two times in six seconds, one time every three seconds. It's all depending up to you, however you want, however fast you want it. Also, if you have it if you plan on having it loop for a lot longer, I would rather, I think it would look better if you just did an After Effects and rendered it out looping a bunch and then you didn't have to like copy and paste because you could hold Alt, copy and paste it, but it might look a little weird if you if it pauses for a second or something. Yeah, so you'd have to like cut out a frame or whatever uh, so it like doesn't do that pause, but that's not a big deal. You, you could just cut one frame off the start and off the back of it and it would be fine. Just to save a little bit of hassle, you could do it that way. Let me know if you guys want some more 3D uh, tutorials. I'm not too familiar with 3D, but I definitely want to learn it. I think this is a pretty cool intro like your first thing if you haven't done any 3D previously. I think this is a really easy one that you could have followed along and got a pretty cool look off of. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help push my channel to people that want to see my content. If you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to brianalmada.com, check out my texture pack, check out my tutorial playlist on the texture pack, join the Discord, the Twitch, Instagram, all the stuff will be linked below. I really do appreciate you guys. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.